Hello, I'm Donald Leggett and welcome to this edition of Share Views brought to you by London South East. I'm joined in the studio by Hayden Locke, CEO of Emerson, who, as you probably know, are busy developing the world-class chemisette potash project in northern Morocco. Uh, welcome, Hayden. Thanks, Donald. Great. So, busy as ever? Yep, as always, moving the project forward and uh, ticking off milestones. Good, good to see you again. Uh, what's, the, what's the latest announcement about? What's the latest RNS? So we put out an announcement just saying that we'd consolidated uh, the core 21 or so permits of the Chemiset project into a single permit. Um, you know, it doesn't seem like a, a huge piece of news, but it is big for a number of reasons for us. Mm -hmm. Number one, we've managed to go through that process with the government in a fairly, uh, fairly good timeline. Um, it's starting to prepare us for the eventual mining permit application process. And it really just shows the government is, uh, you know, really engaged with us as a company uh, to help us move this forward and through the various administrative processes that we've got coming up. So permitting can be, a, in, of any variety, can be a really, really slow process. How long have you been negotiating with the government about this? So we've been talking to the government for about a, a, about six to eight months on this. Talking, not to negotiating? Talk, not negotiating, no, because there, it's a very... A clear process that we went through. I think the complicating factor was this is a brand new mining code and we're one of the first companies to ever do this consolidation of permits ahead of going into the mining permit application. So uh, it was a learning experience for both the government okay. and for us. But, uh, all, the, all the more impressive it was done in a short period of time then, given that it's brand new. Unbelievably <laughs> impressive from the Moroccan <laughs> government and bodes extremely well for when we eventually uh, move through to that mining permit process. So as you say, it seems like a relatively small step forward, uh, but this is you engaging uh, officially with the Moroccan government and it seems to have gone very smoothly. What do you read into, into the smoothness of the process? Well, number one, this uh, new mining code is functioning exceptionally well we've, and we've seen that the government is very committed to helping companies like us move forward. It's something that we've said previously uh, in public forums that we're very uh, happy with the level of engagement with the government, but this really does show just how engaged the government is and how supportive they are of what we're trying to achieve. In uh, talk is cheap, but you've got to walk the talk, exactly. and you see this as them walking the talk. Stamping the document is the hardest thing to do. You know, there's lots of chat before that, but stamping the document and signing off on it uh, is what we've done, and uh, you know, it's a huge, it's a huge. Lots of cups of tea in Morocco, I presume. Chai is it? Well, no, not chai. Mint tea. Mint tea mint is Moroccan. Lots yep. of mint tea. Lots of mint tea. Yes. Good. I'm glad you like mint tea. I do. I love it. <laughs> okay. And why do you think they've? Why do you think the government uh, like Emerson and they like the potash project in northern Morocco? Well, they are actively trying to develop their mining industry, so they're they're looking for companies to come in and invest in the space. Uh, but I think what we've shown over the last or three to four years, but really the last 18 months, is a very strong commitment to moving this project forward quickly uh, and professionally. We've done everything to a very high standard, uh, including our environmental baseline studies and all of our social engagement. So I think the, the government actually sees that we are a real company that is looking to move this project to become a mine. And uh, it will become a very significant mine in the context of the Moroccan mining industry. Uh, I think once we're in production, we'll be one of the largest mines by employment in the country. It'll be certainly one of the largest investments made in Morocco in the mining industry uh, outside of the phosphate industry. So it's a very significant project. We are a project of national significance for the Moroccan government. Which is quite a big deal. A huge deal. Um, timelines. How long will it take you to go from where you are now, having consolidated 21 permits into one, to going for that full mining uh, uh, permit application? How long will that take? Well, there are two aspects to starting the mining uh, permit application process. The, the mining permit application process um, is a function of complexity, so we, we can't really say exactly how long it would take, but we would expect it to be less than 12 months. Um, in terms of starting that process, we first need to deliver the feasibility study and a full environmental social impact assessment. So the planning is already well underway for the environmental social impact assessment. Uh, we're having a meeting next week in Morocco with our environmental consultants to finalise the full plan moving that forward. I expect we'll deliver that in the early part of the new year around the same time as when we deliver the feasibility study. You're, you're taking all the words out of my mouth here. So how are, we, how are you getting on with the feasibility study? It's moving, it's moving really, really well. We've had, uh, we've had lots of uh, work going on in the background getting us to a, a, f a final go forward case in terms of which options we're choosing for each of the portions of the project. We're now at that final process and then the, the really detailed design and engineering starts in the coming months and we'll see some news flow uh, coming out off the back of that 
Uh, in the RNS, it says first half of 2020, uh, is it more towards the, the first quarter or the first half? Well, we guided that it was nine to 12 months, which would put us at the end of the first half of next year, so the end of June. Okay. Uh, at this stage, I'm confident it'll be towards the front end of that nine to 12 month guidance. So that puts us somewhere in March, April, maybe May. So a little bit ahead of schedule. Okay. Um, the practical benefits of pulling these mining permits together, what, what are those for you guys? Well, Make it's quite an administrative burden to have multiple mining permits because as part of our ongoing uh, reporting requirements, we have to submit a report for every permit that we have. We have 55, so you can imagine the uh, reporting and administrative burden on our team in country. Consolidating that down into a single permit uh, just means that we, we no longer have to submit 50, 21 per, 21, 21 pro, uh reports to the government for, for those. Uh, so instead of 21 pieces of paper, it's one, for one consolidated much larger uh, 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 report. Exactly. And we're not having to justify which work's been done on which permit and things like that, you know, not uh, apportioning work to different permits. Um, it's quite complex having multiple permits for, from a reporting perspective. So this really simplifies our, our in-country administrative burden. Okay. Let's take a broader view of the project. How are things going? What kind of news flow can we expect in the next uh, weeks, months? Uh, so I think the big news in the coming weeks, well, we're still going with the uh, MOU discussions with in-country service providers, so partners on the logistics side, on the electricity side, um, potentially on the port side. Um, we'll probably see some updates coming out of that. Uh, we've got um, the resource upgrade, so that'll be mostly about increasing it to the measured and indicated category. I expect that to be out uh, sometime in October, probably the middle of October, I'd expect. Um, and then moving on towards as we deliver that feasibility study, uh, we are going to break down the feasibility study into the component parts again, as we did with the scoping study, delivering you know the small breakdowns, showing that the capex, the low capex story that we had in the scoping study, still stands true. It stacks in up. The feasibility study. Uh, strategic partnerships. Any any news on pulling in that that that, that bigger player? Um, Probably not appropriate to, to talk about those sorts of things um, now, other than to say it's a focus of ours and we're working hard uh, on that as a potential final. I only mention it because you're doing so well on everything else. It's like you're hitting all your milestones. Clearly, the more milestones you hit, the more, the more real it becomes, then there is only one large question to, uh, to answer. So I thought I'd chuck that at you. Yeah, finance is a, big, is a big question and we are, uh, we're engaged with a variety of different parties that have the potential to be able to support us in finance in this mine. Um, Sirius Minerals, did that cast a, cast a cloud on, on, the, uh, on the Emerson horizon? Sirius Minerals were doing a big project up in Yorkshire and um, they needed a 500, pound, uh, 500 million uh, uh, a bond issue. It didn't happen. They're in serious financial difficulties. It was an, a new fertiliser uh, mm -hmm. uh, mine. Mm. Does that affect you guys? I think there were only two of you actually listed. Uh, well, there are a number of uh, potash plays lift, listed in both Australia and, and London. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's a very sad story. Um, you know, it was going very well and they've done a lot of good work in educating the investment community here in, um, in Europe as to the global agricultural themes. Uh, for us, we're a very different project to Sirius. It's a, it's a mega project um, with that increased complexity in financing and execution. And I think what you're referring to now is the complexity of financing such a large project. Um, remains to be seen what, will, what the outcome will be. But for us, we're very different. You know, we're a much, much smaller project. By uh, that very nature, much easier to finance. Uh, we're selling a product that is uh, the most widespread potash based fertilizer so it's not a new product very easy to understand the market dynamics and so we think uh, we think s um, a much easier story in terms of getting through those so you see yourself as being quite clearly differentiated from Sirius Minerals yeah and I think Sirius say themselves that actually they're complementary to MOP rather than a competitor of MOP with their product I think their product is an interesting one it's more complementary to what we're trying to do rather than uh, a direct competitor although there would obviously be some shake up in the market if they brought those tonnages in Interesting. Okay, final question. So what's happening in the, in the wider world of, of fertilizer? Who's doing what to who? And what's, what's interesting you at the moment? Uh, well, I think what's interesting me most is the, is the real focus on Africa, uh, and especially that East African market from the large fertilizer players, especially in the Middle East. So we're seeing a lot of uh, large Middle Eastern firms buying fertilizer distribution businesses in East Africa. Mm. Uh, and I think that really speaks to what we've been saying. At smart prices? Um, relatively 
uh, relatively good valuations. I, I think it would be the description. I don't think they're overinflated. I don't think they're getting it cheap, um, but they're really doing it strategically to get a foothold in the fastest growing fertilizer market in the world, which is Africa. And we're seeing that across the board, but specifically in Morocco, uh, 2018, the growth of potash uh, imports from 2017 to 2018, it grew 50% from 500,000 to 750,000 tonnes of potash imports. Um, that is a huge jump, and it means that, pot mm. that Morocco is uh, growing for the last six or seven years at about 120% per annum on I import demand. You can see Morocco could be a, a, a fertiliser hotspot for you guys. I think, I think OCP are working very hard, spending a lot of money in and around Africa, announced more partnerships in Nigeria, more par partnerships in Ethiopia. They are really working hard to expand their footprint, and potassium plays a huge part role in that expansion and uh, we're ideally located to hopefully play into that broader thematic. Hayden mm, Locke uh, is CEO of, of Emerson PLC. Thank you very much indeed for joining me today. Thanks Fascinating so as ever. Uh, if you want to see more interviews like this one then uh, subscribe to the London South East YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.